No. What up, fish people? Kenny E with the Anakin Aquatics. How y'all doing? This is Kenny E. And of course, we all know Danny. Oh, we're a little early. Yeah. Oh, it's time to go. <laughs> Fishing paintings. No, it's looking good with that one. Maybe that way you just have the. How's it going, everybody? Can y'all hear us okay? Hey, William, how you doing, bud? Just wondering how the mics are working, if you can hear us okay. Hey, Suresh, how are you, sir? Big Ed, what's going on, Chattanooga Egg? Nathan at Sand Creek Aquatics, how are you, sir? If somebody in the chat could let me know if our uh, sounds good. Thanks, Suresh. Well, guys, welcome to the uh, first ever Danikin Aquatics live stream. And as you can see, it's not all about Kenny E tonight. Sitting beside me is the beautiful Danny from Danikin Aquatics, my beautiful wife. So anyway, guys, we're going to do this every Sunday night at 6 p.m. Pacific and 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we do have dual cameras going. Uh, if there's a part of my fish room you want to see, I'll be able to basically take you to that as well. We hope, we hope that the... It does else. get a little sketch in the lower <laughs> levels, so. How's everybody doing tonight? How you doing, Rob's Aquarium? NR Fishing Man, 009, how are you? Did you see a chat movie? And there is Monica Lynn. How you doing, Monica? I don't know how to make a wrench. How do you make a wrench? That's what I'm wondering. I was just trying to do that. <laughs> right click. Sorry, guys. I'm still doing the ins and outs of this. One of the folks I plan to make a mod is here. And I'm, trying I'm trying to figure, to figure out, out how, how to, make to make her a mod, mod now. now. Anybody know how to make a mod? Would be the first question of the day. <laughs> Don't know. Uh oh, did we lose them? No, because it says live up there in the how do these people do it? this corner up here? Uh -huh. Live 10 minutes. We haven't been on 10 minutes, have we? I hope not. <laughs> I don't know what. Well, how long they do all that stuff? This is this is newer to me than it is to you. Yeah. Why don't you turn that camera so it's on you? There you go. I don't See? want to be on like that. No, no. The fish tank is much better. <laughs> so, what's everybody doing tonight? Any good fish stuff? Uh huh? Should I look up how to make a mod? Yes. Look it up on this one. You got it right there? Yeah. Because a mod. Oh, we're, we're not down. You have to be on the YouTube page, is why. So go into YouTube on that one. Sorry, guys. First stream, we're just trying to get everything down. The beautiful wife has figured a few things out for me. And as you guys can see behind me here, I was pretty excited. Uh, I got tired of the Oscars being downstairs where we couldn't see them. So they all came up here with me now. So they're in the 135 behind me. And then we uh, moved all the fish downstairs. That's good to hear, Fish Island Tactics. How you doing, Ryan? Good to see you. 
Danny is now going to be assigning mods for me here shortly. Hopefully, no, no, no big promises. I can't keep. So you need to go into the live stream with Danikin. So you click on them, you should be able to you click on the person and then it says add moderator. Would you make a mod? Okay, Monica. Then uh, also make natural aquariums. I don't see moonstone yet. All right, guys. Yeah. I'm sure glad everybody showed up. Let me uh, give a shout out to everyone in the in the uh, channel here. So first one in tonight was Sean OTD. Thank you, sir. Followed closely by Monica Lynn. Then we have Fish on Tanktics. William was uh, the next one in. We, William Predmore. Hope I didn't butcher that, William. And then my good buddy Suresh from Sailfin Aquatics. Then we got Chattanooga Ed. Hello, Ed. Good old Nathan from Sand Creek Aquatics. Then we got Rob's Aquariums, Connor Rothhandler, Handler. Rothhandler. Sorry, guy. And then <laughs> Mr. Fisherman 009. And we also have Warren. No, we have not kept sparkling garamis, but it is something that I am considering. So I haven't had them yet. They're really pretty little fish, though. If you guys, if this is your first time to Danicate Aquatics, we keep a broad range of uh, fish. Uh, we have over 60 tanks set up, uh, ranging anything from guppies all the way to big boys behind me. Um, my love is in, if you look at the other picture we have, to the, this way, up that way of us. You, know, you can see that's one of my loves. That's my African cichlids. Upper left. Top corner there is a Paratilapia bleaker eye. That is one of my all-time favorite fish. Oh, and I guess uh, Baby Doll, our little Yorkie, decided she wants to be part of the uh, take her off. She wants to be part of the live stream this, tonight as well. So, anyway, guys, as we get better, of course, things will get bigger and better. I do plan to have guests on occasion as well. Um, overall. It's pretty much going to be all about you guys, anything you have questions on, or if there's certain, everybody wants to see certain, this is your night that if you want to see one of my tanks, you say, hey, Kenny, I want to see this, bam, I'll grab the uh, other camera and I'll go down and show them to you. Monica says, hello, Danielle. Hello, how are you? The other thing is, too, if you don't watch my channel, my wife, Danielle, does not get on camera very often. I don't. So she is uh, here for this historic event. <laughs> the tank behind me, the other thing we're keeping in there with the Oscars, we have two uh, Texas cichlids. And then I also have a uh, Vieja Zanata. It's the uh, Rio Carolina. And then also uh, we have a very large Moda in there, supersized Pleco. And then I have a Synodotus decorus in there. He's beautiful, but I saw the dot. And then we got an extra, extra large green tear in there. So, and then obviously the tank beside my wife and I here is the African. And as you can see in there, we have some dragon bloods. We also have some Venustas. We have the striped fish are zebra obliquians. They're from Lake Victorian uh, watersheds. They're not part of Lake Victoria. They were on the CARES list for a while. And then we also have some very large lace synodontists in there. Lace cats, I call them. Uh, what else we got in there? Borley eye, uh, real large uh, VC10, and then some Yellow red eyes. zebras. And then, like I said, uh, firefish, a couple other things. You'll see a bunch of different mixes in there. So any of you guys got any questions for me so far? Are you down all the way in the chat? First thing, are we in the top? You need to be watching that one because that's the actual YouTube chat. Make sure you're in. What's chat. your favorite fit? Connor Rathenlow wants to know. My personal favorite, he's up in the, 
other tank over here would be that parrot tilapia bleaker eye would be my top top in the house followed closely by probably my mud skippers Taylor's Aquatics is on there. Hey, Bob. How you doing, sir? Big J's Fish Keepers. Big J's in the house. How are you, bud? Yes, Jeremy Edwards. It finally happened. <laughs> how many Oscars are in that wall tank? There are four Oscars total in there right now. Four Oscars and a large uh, moda, and then the other ones that I told you. But the Oscars were down in a uh, 120 tall. I wanted to give them something that had more length so they could actually, you know, swim back and forth. There's the moda now behind me. Um, basically, we wanted to be able to give them room to grow and a little, little space so that they're not tearing each other up so much. How you doing, Pam? Hi, Pam. There's Chevy Fish, Warren Davies. And let me give a shout out to Bob Kaler. Congrats, sir, on hitting your 4,000. Yeah, that's So great. you are fully monetized. That's awesome. Do you have any cool orange fishes with black stripes and red fins? Any cool fishes? Orange fish. Bright orange fish. Closest thing I've got, Ryan, would be the uh, Kyoga Flameback, which she's in the uh, 75 in this room. What's your smallest tank? Five gallon. <laughs> and I keep my, the world's smallest live bearers in that. Yeah, we have the least killing fish in there. Yeah. Hey, I know some of the sun is sipping, huh? You're wearing, you're wearing <laughs> off on me. <laughs> That's funny. Sorry, this guy's showing the friendship. Yep. Well, Monica is. I don't know about the National Aquarium. Let me look at. Yes. Who else? No. Moonstone's not here. Hey, Bethany, how are you? Fish Dreams. Hey, Fish Dreams. Maybe clown loaches? Yes, oh, yes. Ryan, I got lots of clown loaches. <laughs> <laughs> the insane, insane clown posse. Everybody who watches my channel knows we got the insane clown posse downstairs with the angel fish. <laughs> right, orange fish, orange fish. Right. Orange fish right. Right. Uh, I don't know, know. We have like 60 tapes. What are the inhabitants? What are the colors? Oh, so funny. Thank you, Ozzy Octane. Activate your likes for at Danikin. That was sweet. Thank you, sir. And what's your biggest tank? Our biggest tank is a 240. And that, that has, is our discus tank. Yeah. We have discus in there, and then we have uh, rainbows. What are they? Denison barbs. Yeah, big Denison barbs. Uh, we've got electric blue rams in there. They're beautiful. And then we've got some assorted tetras. There's a uh, few cardinals in there, some uh, neons, and then whatever that albino dude is. What is he? I don't even know what he is. I don't know. Yeah, we've got like this. He's about that big. a mystery fish. See, what, one thing we do for our local area here too, guys, I'm kind of like a pet shelter. Anybody that has fish that they no longer love, I open my home to them, let them bring them to us, and we take care of them. As long as we have tank space. Yeah, when the tank space is available. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, you know that uh, we will get you whatever kind of tank you want set up. But the way your kid likes to stick his hand in the tank, I don't think there's any fish safe with him right now. 
In case you all don't know, Jeremy Edwards is my son, and he has my grandson, Dax, who absolutely flips out every time he comes to Grandpa's house. Uh, he absolutely, at 18 months, is absolutely hooked on fish, and he checks them out. And uh, anyway, he was asking what we're going to set him up with for his first tank. So, Chevy Fish, the top five favorite plants of mine is I love the Taiwan lilies. I love the, um, I really like the hydro, 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 willow hydro, um, because it just takes over a tank. I absolutely love that. And then we've got some giant Valicinera down in the 240. And that's really becoming one of my fast favorites. It's just growing like crazy and the blades get about an inch wide and they grow probably a couple feet. They're all starting to um, kind of go in the flow of the tank. It's looking really, really pretty. And I really like um, the mosses. I love all mosses. Hey, Alex, how are you, sir? Glad you could make it. And Crinum calamistratum. I have to say that's one of my top faves. Tiffany, actually, I never have kept the uh, African dwarf frogs, believe it or not. Yeah. I never have. We had a chance to get some at the club one day, and we didn't do it. Yeah, we <laughs> missed out, or we would have had them. We do have an axolotl, though. Yeah, I got it as an egg, and we had about 20 or so eggs, and they all hatched. And then they all disappeared except one, and I still have him, but he's about four or five inches long now. How big is that pleco <laughs> behind you? The ones back here? That's uh, That one is probably, I would say, 14 or so, maybe 15 inches long. He's just a beast. Yeah, he's pretty big. Unfortunately, today I, I felt bad. He was the only one that did receive an injury from today's move. He got one of his uh, side fins ripped a little bit. I was upset by it, but it happens. Thomas C., you're fine. Hey, Cody, son. <laughs> That's one of my, I want to make him one too. Mm -hmm. Cody, son. Cody, son. I'm looking, I don't think. Okay. I'll keep looking. Hello, Aquarium Jumbo. Bethany Miller, we moved them into the tank today. <laughs> Well, welcome from Brazil. We enjoy having you. Thank you so much. There's Kim. How Hi, you doing, Kim. Kim? We miss you guys. Joey, how are you, sir? Glad you could make it. Okay, there. I made Cody some tomorrow. You're good. Where did the other Africans go? Well, they went into the tank that we took the Oscars out of. So we switched them from this 135 down into a 125 downstairs. Actually, I, I moved them in the different spots. I had a couple of leftover tank and Nikons <laughs> in that tank that went into the tank and Nikon tank. Then my wife didn't like that because she was afraid my two little Itty bitty Leloopies were going to damage her ones that were in there. So they ended up with my uh, breeding colony of my uh, dragon bloods and Kyogas. And then all the uh, little uh, cockatoo cats went into that tank as well, the 75. And then everything else went into the 120 downstairs. I put a nice little reef in for them so everybody's happy. Hi, Ginger Graves. Glad you're lurking. What are you making for dinner? <laughs> We're doing dinner after the stream. Hey, FNS, glad you could make it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Hi, Katrina. It's nice to see you. Katrina is the president of our Greater Portland Aquarium Society. How you doing, Connor? So 
So me and Ken have been deciding how, how do you fi figure out when an, you've reached the limit of how many tanks you should be keeping? <laughs> we were having this discussion earlier today. I think yeah, I mean, we're, we're literally guys cleaning tanks every day. Multiple yeah. tanks. We're sitting here, okay, so we just go to like 30 huge tanks and keep 30 of the nicest fish we love. But the problem is I like breeding them too because it helps pay the electric bill and all that stuff. But I mean, yeah, it, it, if you ever want to tackle what we're doing, I mean, it's it's a chore. Yeah. Bob Taylor can understand. He uh, keeps 30 plus down there. And then my good friend Monica Lynn is starting a fish room in her, her basement as well. Um, she's not much on YouTube yet, but she's going to be changing that. And she also has a killer uh, Instagram account page that shows quite a bit of stuff one of my other mods that you all will see in the, the channel this evening is uh natural aquariums he's from the pacific northwest here he lives close to me he's also a member of greater portland aquarium society if you guys have not taken the time to check out his channel he's a real cool dude very very knowledgeable keeps a lot of planted tanks so <laughs> Cody said, wait there's a limit <laughs> <laughs> All I will say, Cody Son, is, you know, she, she, we talk, we go back and forth all the time. And it's usually when we're on take number 20 of the day and we're like, do we really want to continue to do this? We're in our 50s, but you know what? I, the reality is, I see us stopping at 100 because I know how we are. <laughs> we I talk think a, we need to get some automatic water changing. We talk a good talk, but I, I just have a feeling we're going to be in the batting more. But how you doing, Mark? Since we're so we're so upbeat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to be when you have sixty tanks. You just gotta yep. to crank up the music and listen to your favorite YouTubers as you clean your tanks. You know how it goes. <laughs> Manfish Diva in the house. Thanks for stopping by, Diva. I enjoy watching Little Man Man Diva. Love her little channel, just uh, cracks me up. Yeah, well, we're kind of tripping out on as uh, as people are passing through, as people I've watched their channels as I was watching YouTube and building my channel. It's just cool to see you all here. I appreciate each and every one of you taking the time to yeah. hit our stream. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's really and like great. I said, as we get better at this, we'll have a better stream. I like I said, I do plan to have guests. Um, but mainly it's always going to be about you guys. If there's ever a fish tank you want me to take you to, always I'm going to have this second camera up. All I have to do is grab it and go. So, oh, there's somebody's night lurking in Sweden. Night lurking in Sweden, it's 314. There, who is it? Mickey M. Oh, Mickey M. I didn't know he was from Sweden. It says stay safe, y'all. Yeah, you too. It's a pandemic all around the world. Ugh. Don't bring it up. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, we're not monetized, so we can bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, going a little stir crazy here. I've been working at home for about four weeks now, and uh, I do have clearance to go into the office if I need to once in a while. So. Not so many. Oh, it's Jeremy. Let's see those mud skippers. Says, so, do you have access to more Kyoga? <laughs> um, right now, we've got to start up in the Brian game again. Ours have slowed down at the moment, but yeah. In answer to your question, my Kyoga is put out at least two to three hundred fry a year. So, Jeremy Edwards says he wants to see, see the, the mud, mud skippers. skippers. <laughs> Does anybody else want to see the mud skippers? I'll take go down and show you the mud skippers real quick. If you lose me, Miss Danielle will still be sitting here. Yes, and I can still answer some chats along the way. Uh, plant ideas for 20 longs. Uh, Critum calamistratum. And the Taiwan lilies for sure. And then I would definitely go with Anubias and the Java ferns. Um, get some wood in there if you can, depending on what kind of fish you're going to be keeping in there. Although I don't recommend any plants as you're going to keep those little geophagus or some of these other things. I didn't know silver dollars ate plants, and I 
put a whole bunch of beautiful plants in my tank and the silver dollars just lunch them together nothing. nothing. Just give them nothing. nothing. Uh, it was awful. Okay, okay, so we got, got everybody, everybody wants to see the mud skippers and Sean, of course. Mr. Sean wants to me to show him your shell dollars. <laughs> he always wants to see the shell dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna be getting some multis for right, a friend I'll of mine. I'll get up and start heading that way. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I'm getting uh some multis for a friend. He lives a couple of blocks away from me, and I guess he has a great big tank load. So um, I'm really excited about those. And Sand Creek Aquatics says, I'm with uh, Sean, and he wants to see the shell bowlers. So as you can see, Ken's going downstairs. Oh, I think he took the mic. All right. Mm. Can you all still hear me okay? You'll have to watch the chat, Danielle, because I can't see or hear. Mm. Still hear me okay? You have to watch the chat, Danielle, because I can't see her here. They hear you fine. They'll hear me okay. And of course, these little guys tonight. I know. You can't see if you can't see you. We'll go around to the other side, show Sean and his shell dwellers while we're at it. <laughs> so, this is our Signatus tank. Danielle, if you can hear me, uh, give me a thumbs up. There's the mail back there. Now, something we did add to our mud skippers this week, guys, is, hey, look at that. They had knocked down one already. But I've got this. Uh, red mangrove, it's called. There's one of them, finally. Now, these guys were keeping in a 100-gallon, uh, excuse me, 110 long. And what I've done is I've made this side there. And then we give them nice little land over here. I should have gotten some crickets for you all tonight. They're a blast. Next Sunday I'll have crickets on hand so you guys can watch them eat. And while I'm down here, I suppose I can show you guys. This is uh, the 240. This is our discus tank. Mm -hmm. And in here we have, like I said, it's nicely planted because of the beautiful Danny of Danikin Aquatics. Sorry, when I get to this side, guys, Mud Skipper Tank gives us a little bit of glare. But we have uh, a total of, I believe, eight discus in here right now, and then two more upstairs. We've got the red here, and behind him is our blue diamond. I do have a breeding pair of those upstairs. Then we also have our pigeon bloods. And right here is my leopard snakeskin, this is called. And then this one's the only one I've named so far. This is Tony the Tiger. And then behind there, you can see the other leopard snake skin. Other species we have in here are the millennial, I'm probably butchering that, millennium albino rainbows. And then as you can see, I've got a rather large school of denison sharks. Dennis and Barb's, whatever you all want to call them. And then, like I said, we do have these gold barbs. There you are, Bob Kaler. I know that's one of your favorites. And then back in the back, they usually hang back here. There's one. We got our electric blue rams. 
And then, believe it or not, guys, there is probably eight to ten stir by Coriador in this tank. And we have no rocks, no wood hardly at all in here, but you can never see the guys. They're always hiding. How they get into this like they do, I do not know. And then the other ones I'll show you, these are super rare. Everything in this tank are F1. I've um, got a good friend by the name, we'll just call him John Fish. And he does rare Tetras and Apistos. And these Tetras are called the, oh, Lord, mid of the Chichos, I'll call them. Herla Farhoma. <laughs> when she was down here with me, she'd say it right. I don't know if she can... Say I'm right in the chat for you guys, but then we also have uh, Pistogramma Me2 AKA D6s. And that's what these little yellow guys in the back there. Gorgeous little fish. Here's one. Like I said, these are F1. He got them wild caught from the wild. He's kind of been a very good friend to me. He's hooked me up with some serious cool fish. If you're a fish lover, you can understand when you got a buddy that likes to give you fish. And since you all have been interested in what's going on with the Africans, where they ended up, I'll show you what I did in here. Can you froze? Oh, I couldn't hear you, so. Can you browse? So we will, will put this back, back up here. here. Like, like I, I said, said, that's what happens yeah. with. There, there you go. go. It's all blurry. There it goes. Perfect. When you took the microphone on here, look out of where. Did you hear me down there? Okay? Yeah, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear anything. Okay, okay guys. guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Sean, Sean like I told you in the earlier stream, my wife and I will send a pair of uh, uh, signatus for you. Try to get, get those shipped off to you. you. Being that you're, you're Mr. Shelly, man, 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 I suppose it's only fitting that you have some, some of those. Since I've been back, back can everybody hear us okay now? now? Did you turn, turn on, on the mic? mic? Turn, turn off your, your mic on this. I already did. Hold on, Hold on guys. guys. Sorry, right. she unmuted me over yeah. here. How's that? Are we echoing now? That's the main mic we're using right now. I already turned off mine. You sure you have your mic muted? Yeah. Everybody, how we doing? No echo? Okay, good. Nice. Okay. Sorry about that. She unmuted us when I went downstairs, or I must have unmuted when we came back online.
<laughs> Look at the dog sitting there. <laughs> Gizmo, when did you get in the shot, dog? <laughs> yes, that's Gizmo. That's our little Pomeranian Chihuahua mix. He's 14 years old. He's just one of those dogs that just uh, hangs out for your entire life. <laughs> He's almost as good as the fish. Just keeps on going. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Our dogs are pretty uh, needy. They need to be close to us at all times. That's probably why he's there. Oh, Jeremy, you know you love Gizmo. <laughs> Uh, Alex, you're supposed to be watching for questions. I thought that was your job. I don't know. I got Alex. Busy. Alex asked a question. She said. Okay, so let me roll up this. Alex, breeding fish. I think is this. Trying to find the question. Oh. What does F1, F2 mean? I heard people saying that a lot, and I don't know what it means. Okay, F1 basically is the first brew of fish from wild, meaning you have a wild pair, Alex, that you have bred, and they, they make F1s. And then what your F2s are are basically the babies of the F1s. But if they're F1, that means they're first generation out of the wild. How are the baby Salvinis? We have the Rio Candelaria. I would say we have 70 of them left. We were about able to that, save yeah. about 70. And they're right now probably, mm, some of them are getting to be about an inch yeah. to a half inch long. So, they're getting to be a good shipping size or bapping size. Um, we were going to bap them last month at the Aquarium Society, but uh, I just felt like they were just still a little tiny bit too small to take them in for me to feel comfortable, even though they were like four months old. They were just kind of, they're kind of slow growing, not real fast. Joey, I'd highly recommend the uh, dwarf giraffe cat. Awesome, awesome species. That sounds like it's going to be a cool tank, 130-gallon African tank. Or excuse me, 180. Wow. Yeah, I'd, I'd be envious of that, bro. Yeah, the little dwarf African cats are cool. Big J, I told you, you're already promised something, man. When we come down, well, let me rephrase that. If Sacramento still goes on, we will be bringing some with us for you. <laughs> Thomas, see, you're so funny. The dog is stealing the show. <laughs> Yes, my little gizmo is, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, our, we had a daughter that wanted this dog, and then basically he got attached to me and my wife, so she said, well, I don't want him anymore, so there he sits, that's gizmo, gizmo. <laughs> <laughs> you good boy. See, now he's looking at you like, what do you want, Dad? I don't have a treat right now. <laughs> Look at his ears perk up. Don't say that word. <laughs> There's another word I say that he gets very excited don't about. Don't you but it, dare. It, it is not YouTube friendly, so don't we'll leave you that dare one alone. Say that. Do a future show on discus. Lots of bad info out there. Yours rock. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I was expecting the discus to be super hard. They've always been one of my um go-to fish that I've always wanted to keep but I'd always heard how hard they were to keep and I was scared to death of it and then Ken just he knew how bad I wanted them and he knew how I wanted to put them in a big tank and so he ended up uh trading or or get, by, getting a deal from Cindy Bunn on those pigeon bloods and those were the first ones that he got me and oh those things are just to die for but not nearly as hard to keep as I thought they would be Hey, Alex, don't ever, ever, ever say you felt dumb asking a question. No. That's the thing about YouTube. Everybody here wants to help everybody. 
So the only dumb question is one that's not asked because out of fear for not wanting yeah. to ask. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know everything about fish and uh, there's times that I ask people, Hey, what about this, this, and this, you know, you, only way you're going to learn is by asking. And we learn from each other. That's how we find out. And then, you know, you're getting a real answer. And if I don't know, or Ken doesn't know, we'll say we don't know, you know, and we'll get somebody else in the stream to answer the question. That's the thing I was just going to say. If I don't know the answer, I promise you somebody in this stream would. So yes, Tiffany, they're cute little dogs. I'm a big dog type of guy. We haven't gotten it. We always have one big dog in our house. Unfortunately, our Rottweiler died a few years back. Then we got a uh, husky. Husky, and my daughter fell in love with that and stole it from us. So <laughs> we bought it for her. Well, if you want to say yeah, that. Yeah, come on. Anyway, <laughs> I will be having another Rottweiler soon. Hopefully, I'm, we just don't feel it's fair because we're not home as often as we should. That's the thing. We need to wait till we retire. Because we're both go to work all day. The only thing I've got, Nathan, is even close to saltwater is what I took you guys down and showed. The uh, mud skippers are brackish. But, no, I don't, I don't keep saltwater. I've got 60 tanks up, and I don't want one of them to be saltwater. You should have seen us, though, in Hawaii. We had a saltwater tank, and I'd just go down to the pier and pull up a bucket of water out of the ocean, go and dump it in the tank. And then we'd go and we'd check the tide pools or he'd go fishing and we'd put them in the tank. And that worked out great until Ken was cleaning the tank I got a scar and got this bit day. by yeah. the moray eel. <laughs> Wasn't paying attention. He was paying attention well, to the, football. The Super Bowl was on and I was doing <laughs> tank maintenance and uh, had my head watching the game. And I turned back down that eel's mouth was wide open, just clamped down on my hand. So, yeah. So, so we put the eel back. <laughs> yeah, that was the last day the eel was there. But I did. I, and I went out looking for one, and I found one in a little tide pool, a huma huma nuku nuku apua a. And I was so excited to find it. That's basically Hawaii's uh, state fish. State fish. It's yeah. a type of trigger fish. All my kids had to learn the Hawaiian state fish's name. <laughs> Alex, I'll tell you a story about that husky we had, man. Yeah, you talk about they need a lot of time. You aren't kidding, man. He ate our couch. Yeah, the first first week we had him, yeah, maybe the second. I come home, and that dog was in my couch. He had ripped the side out. He was in my couch and ripped through the cushion. He was sticking his head out the other side. I was ready to kill him. But my wife and kids said, no, Dad, the, the, the Fajaka's doing great, Kaler. <laughs> yeah, and the only other puffer fish we have besides the fajaca, which we're, the fajaca's not ours, we're just babysitting that one. We have a teeny tiny little puffer fish, uh, pea puffer. He's cute. No, uh, Ryan, there. I still got scars. I can't remember which. <laughs> I've got a scar. I mean, he he sucked. I think every tooth in his mouth in my skin. It took my wife and me a couple of minutes to get him off me. He latched down. <laughs> Yeah, it was not a pretty sight. When you got blood going one direction, eel going the other. <laughs> Thomas C. Say that times five times fast. What the huma huma nuka nuka apua? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> yes, I agree. Puffers are awesome. I want to get a red eye puffer. Now those I just absolutely uh, love for some reason, and they don't get super big. And my friend Kim Holtz keeps them. And uh, they're really, really cool. But yeah, we've been keeping fish for good. thirty plus years. Yeah, we've been married I've for actually thirty been, years too. Been keeping them since I was ten. But first time I kept fish wasn't. I had like a fish bowl that I put a couple of little bitty bluegill in and a bullhead, and it lasted like overnight. But again, how do you learn? You know, I didn't know about filtration and all that. I had an aerator in there and that was it. And the aerator fell out and they all died. But when we got to Hawaii, we ran in some good friends. They had Oscars and the rest is history. I, I've always kept the Africans have been my thing. Um, but, it, you know, because of you guys and this one sitting beside me here, I have opened my eyes to a lot of cool things. I mean, she has opened my eyes to a lot of cool, cool fish. 
like you would never guess that on his side of the on in the bedroom on his side of the bed he has nano fish yes i got <laughs> nano fish and it's planted and i'm the one in charge of it yes. and nothing's died <laughs> which is so true <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> The one I'm babysitting, Big J, is Chaka the Fahaka Puffer. Yeah. He's a cool fish. But I'll tell you guys, I mean, you better be committed if you're going to keep one of these guys. Because, I mean, they are they're uh, quite the mess. They, they need to have their tank cleaned about every three to four days because of the snail residue. And then there's the added bonus every time you stick your hand in and try to clean a the tank. They're coming trying to nip you. The owner of it... Uh, Eric with Guppy Gang Aquatics warned me that he might do that. I said, ah, I never had a fish that doesn't like me yet. Except the more eel. Well, the more eel was a different story. He was <laughs> kind of wild. You know what I mean? It was... <laughs> you know, Bob, I haven't had a lot of uh, trouble keeping that nano tank. It's, like I said, heavily planted. Um, we're, we're on top of our water changes pretty good. Uh, I keep uh, ember tetras in there. I've got pencil fish. Ruby tetras. Ruby tetras. And uh, pygmy pig gories. Yeah, pygmy coriadoras in He's there. He's got like a school of 15 piggy, pygmy coriadoras. It's crazy to watch those little guys run around the tank. Fish Whisper Miles, how are you this evening, sir? Glad you can make it. So Kaler Aquatics has two hoplo cats to clean up after his fajaca. Hop, look at, and the Fajaca doesn't uh, mess with the cats, Bob? Um, the one, the puffers that we have are all freshwater. I don't have any of the brackish water ones, but there are brackish water ones. Um, Connor, what size tank? Uh, which for for what fish? I think he's talking about the oh, ones. Oh, for the quarries. Oh, we have them in a twenty regular. Yeah, we've got fifteen little teeny pygmy corridors in there, and then we also have all those ember. Yeah, they're like stuff. I think they're full grown now. They're only about that. Huge. They're half an inch, maybe. If that, just tiny little guys. I got to like flash a flashlight on them at night because that's when they're most active and I'll stick it on there at night just to see and there'll be a whole school of them going back and forth. Yeah, we're going to try to do the live streams with the both of us. Um, it's much easier when people have questions about the plants or the things that I do or him. You know, we have different areas of expertise. Um, Plus, I, I wanted you guys to know that there is two parts to Danikin. Well, it was funny when my mom suggested the name. She goes, you have to call your channel Danikin. It's Danny and Ken. And you put the two names together and you've got your channel name. And I was like, well, that's a really good idea, Mom. <laughs> Connor, if you have one pygmy Coriadoria, I'd highly recommend getting at least three to four more. They like to school. Yeah. He'll be a lot happier if you get him a few buddies. They're so cute. They're so stinking wiggly cute. Joey, your clown loaches are doing awesome, dude. We yeah, put they're them, doing really good. We put them in the uh, same grow out tank with the Africans just so they could uh, put on size quicker. And they, they've been doing great in there. Yeah. <laughs> great <laughs> idea, Mom. Mom. <laughs> yeah, what are you thinking, Ryan? I should give her royalties or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe someday if we make money, we can. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. <laughs> but I've been meaning to do this live stream thing for a while, guys. We finally, uh, when I was in the automotive business, I didn't have time to be truthful. I was getting off work at 8, 9 o'clock at night. And, uh, by the time I got home, do a few water changes, maybe shoot a video for you guys. We ran out of town, but I... Recently took a position with Airstream Adventures Northwest. And what we are is basically a single point Airstream dealer. So what's cool is by hours now are nine to five, Tuesday through Saturday, off every Sunday and Monday. So I'll be able to, number one, spend more time on my fish, which I love. 
Number two is I'll be able to get more videos out to you. And number three, I finally can dedicate a night to live streaming. Oh, I almost forgot, guys. I'm getting close to 1,000. Yep. And we do plan to do a giveaway when we hit 1,000. Uh, we've got all kinds of cool stuff in our fish rooms. And then uh, my wife's got some cool little ideas with some wood, maybe with some uh, plants on them for you. So we got some cool, cool things coming up when we hit 1,000. Basically, whenever I hit it, the very next live stream will do the giveaway. <coughs> Hey, Andy, how are you, bud? Good to see you. Yeah, this has been fun. Ken was saying, we're going to do it. Even if we don't know what we're doing, we're just going to try to set it up today and get going and do the live stream. I need to get one under my belt. And he was like, I don't care if it totally fails. We have to at least try today, Danielle. I said, all right. Look, all the Oscars came down to say hello. Yeah, they <laughs> they love me, guys. These dudes. The only thing I just realized what I did to myself putting them in here, though, is they uh, like to be scratched by me. So I'll have to do that at night when I'm feeding them from the backside. But I usually scratch them throughout the day when I go down and see them. It is nice having them up here, though. They're a very social fish. Yeah. And I've been telling my wife I've been wanting to do this for about six months. So now they're finally up here. I do hate that my Africans are downstairs, but the ones that are down there, I have duplicates in the tank next to. And I'll still get down there and see them every day. It's just this is the area where my wife and I spend a, quite a bit of time. We have our um, Suzy Q. I have Drogon over there, which those are our. Uh, see, Drogon is one of my holy grail fish. I first saw one of those on Andy Woods uh, stream and it's a hi hiatus. Uh, and I got to tell you, I fell in love with that fish. So um, our friends had this black nasty. That's the common name of it. Had the black nasty and ate some of their betas. And they said, Hey, we got to get rid of this fish. <laughs> and so I'm like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And so it's a big, it's a male and he's still not, he's still pretty tiny for a male so far, but I guess he'll get really, really big. He'll end up having to be in a big tank. I mean, we'd love to put him in with the Oscars, but we know the reality is these things are nasty. They got their name for a reason. Yeah. I'd probably come out to my Oscars gill plates being ripped to shreds. So I'm not going to go there. Although I want to put him in at least a 135 once he gets a little bigger. Yeah. And then, same thing with the Trimex cichlid. I, I'm going to have to get her into a a bigger bigger arena. Connor she, wants to know what our favorite cichlids are, but Ken's is the the. It's leaker. anything I keep. <laughs> if you haven't watched it, <laughs> Ken's is whatever tank he's in keep, front man. of. It's always like this is one of my favorite fish. Oh, shock! <laughs> but yes, we don't keep anything we don't like. <laughs> And there's many that I don't keep that I do like. But so. I, I will give you an answer, Connor. Again, I will say my favorite cichlid in the house is the Paratilapia bleaker eye. And, of course, the minute we bring up him, he's hiding up in this corner. Come on, buddy. Come out. There he comes. No, that ain't. Yeah, there, there he is. is. He's on the far right there. He's back behind all these other fish that just got in front of him. There he is. <laughs> I have two of them. The other one uh, got picked on in this tank, so we're going to be relocating her to another place, or I might put her back in here out to see how she does. I know they can go with Oscars, too. Chris at Multi-Tank Addiction keeps it. Hey, quit messing with my head, dude. He uh, keeps a bleaker eye with his. See, now, Big J, here we go. Big J says, the pollen eye. It's not a pollen eye. Ours is yeah, not. Ours are guarantee a big J bleaker eye. We got ours from Steve Lenbad, Lad, and the owner of the Cichlid Exchange. Yeah, and uh, he goes and collects these type of fish himself. There's the uh, bleaker eye right now yeah, going right across there in front. on the other screen there, Connor. Holy, wow! We've been what? on almost an hour. Oh yeah, we. have Getting close. Wow. <laughs> this is going fast. Yeah, it seems like we just started, guys. <laughs> Does anybody know if anybody's streaming behind us tonight? 
So I don't want to get into their time if they are. Oscar de la Renta. <laughs> it's a famous designer. <laughs> Oscar de la Hoya. <laughs> Oscar de la Hoya. I love boxing. I just have to say. These ones I have right now, I, if you guys were following my channel, I had Vidar and Loki were the original two Oscars I had. I went to work and I came home one night and um, so Loki decided to descale Vidar and there, I couldn't save him. And I was going to keep her and I got two of the guys you see behind me and she tried to scale them immediately. So at that point, I, I don't normally give up on fish, but after she did that, I, I took her down and got two more even up for her because she was a rather large tiger Oscar. And that's how we ended up with these four. Haven't named a, quite a few fish. I, I, I normally do, but uh, it's, I got this jinx, I think, where if I name them, they die. So I stopped naming my fish. And that's the reason why. Although we still have several that have names. Some of them have names. <laughs> so. <laughs> He says that's what happens when you name a fish Loki. So true, right? <laughs> well, the reason that you'll find a lot of Norwegian names in my fish rooms is I am a Norseman. I, I am uh, like 98% Norwegian, and I think I got one little bit of Swedes and one little bit German in me. But for the most part, um, I'm all Norwegian. Connor, we do have geophagus, and I have my favorite kind of geophagus. My favorites are the geophagus savenni. And I personally think they're the most beautiful geophagus. I've got four here in the tank next to me that's outside of the view. And then we have several very large ones downstairs. I can get you one quick picture here. <sighs> Make sure he understands. These are the little ones. This mic is muted. Oh, okay. okay. Of course, you guys go to the back of the tank. There he is. There's a good one. That's the Geophagus Savanni. Oh, you can, you can see them better in the tank that's downstairs. The lighting's better. And, but honestly, these are such gorgeous fish. And these are the little ones. They really haven't gotten all their color ages yet. Now, Alex, if you were asking about uh, F1s and whatnot, if should I ever get these Scalaris to breed, they would be F1 babies. These are wild-caught Scalaris angels I got from a good friend of mine, John. I've had these guys almost a year. He gave them to me with one condition that I didn't kill them. So I've kept my bargain with him. So we'll get this back over. So we are getting close to the six o'clock or excuse me, seven o'clock hour. Did anybody notice if anybody's streaming this evening? Because I don't want to step on. Okay, then I'll continue to stream for a bit for you guys if you want to stick around. Carol Braswell, maiden name Magnuson. I'm Norwegian too. <laughs> Bahala. <laughs> but like I said, guys, I want to, uh, again, I sure appreciate everybody showing up. Some of you are on the East Coast, so I know it's really late back there means a lot to have this many people show up to my first stream. I really appreciate the fish fam. Thumbs up to you guys, man. Kimberly Holtz, Roland's favorite fish is the bleaker eye. <laughs> oh, of course it is. Now, if you guys don't know who uh, Kimberly Holtz is, um, that is Roland, our vice president of uh, Greater Portland Aquarium Society. That's his wife. And if you look in through my videos, I did actually do a video on his fish room. 
Okay. Danny doesn't like the camera angle, so she's. It says our mic is muted. I keep telling you it's that mic, so we aren't getting echoing. I muted it on purpose. Oh, okay. Are you guys still hearing us? She's afraid you can't hear me. Kaylee Aquatics, 952. He's doing saltwater tank uh, cleaning, water changes. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> now, guys, if you haven't been to Kaler's site, Kaler Aquatics, I, I'm sure most of you have, but he keeps a lot of cool fish as well. Now, one thing I will say, Mods, when I mention somebody's uh, channel, you're more than welcome to put a link to their channel down when I mention it in my stream, if anybody out there knows how to do that. And the other thing is, too, on all my mods, every week when we're streaming, you're welcome to put a link to your, your channel as well. Y'all are out here watching my back. That's the least I can do is promote your all's channels. Are, is there any geophagus that could be kept in a 60-gallon? There, uh, there's several. If I was keeping a, just a pair of them, I would keep any of the geophagus in a 60-gallon. Just depends on what you want to put in there with them, Connor. Yeah. And the geophagus are so pretty, but you can't really put many plants with them. The plants that you do put in there need to be attached to like wood or on top of rocks because those geophagus just sift the sand all the time and they're going to constantly uproot your plants unless you ring it with like rocks all the way around, but they need to go almost all the way down to the glass on the bottom because otherwise the geophagus are just going to end up digging them out. <laughs> well, I'll do my best, Nathan. One of these nights, you'll have to come up here with me and keep them all entertained, huh? Although but, Ken does tell a lot of great stories, he has these things that we lovingly call Ken-cidents. We're not bringing that up on night one. <laughs> if any of you watched D Down the Wormhole stream, my wife was gracious enough to bring up some of my past. You can catch up on that. But yeah, I am known as a klutz. Is what, matter of fact, we were worried about whether the stream was going to happen because I got in a rush. I was watching Funk Stream. I come rushing in and I tripped over all the cords. Monitor and all went crashing down. This was like 10 minutes till go time. So we had to hurry up and put everything back together. And usually when I haven't consonanted, what are you saying, son? I love consonants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course you do. <laughs> yep. Connor, they'd be perfect in a geophagus would be perfect in a show tank. They are a show fish. They're so cool. Ginger Graves, thanks for subscribing. I appreciate that. Yeah, she was in cooking dinner. Is she done? <laughs> 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 Jeremy Edwards, he's got picks for sale of the coincidence. <laughs> Whatever. I'll bet he does. I'll bet he does. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Chris P., how are you? We have about 60 tanks up and running. And we got 25 out in the garage to yeah. be set up. Yeah. <laughs> Whether or not they're going to get set up is to be determined. Matter how many fish decide to breed this month. National Aquarium's at Jeremy Edwards. We will talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeremy, I've already determined you're never going to be around for a club meeting. <laughs> That's the other thing, too. I don't know if I've already mentioned it, but Ryan is uh, also a, on the board of directors for Greater Portland Aquarium Society as well. Connor, the other kind of geophagus that I would get that I think stay a little bit smaller that are my second favorite are the Geophagus Wine Miller Eye. Those are beautiful fish. Uh, this one, I would say, Jason, I would have my wife answer. And if she can't, I'm sure we have somebody in the chat. I've never personally bred those. 
His question is, any tips on breeding pearl garamis? I'm sure they're similar to your powder blues, right? Well, they're garamis, yeah. Um, what I did was I made sure that I had a bare bottom tank um, because I believe they're bubble nesters too. And so like when they're breeding, you want them to be able to pick up the eggs off the bottom and um, spit them up into the nest. And you also want to have the tank lowered for about halfway so that there's less room for them to have to go down and pick them up off the bottom to spit up into the nest. Look what your son's done to us. Oh, no. Now what we got bidding wars on Kensington Pits. <laughs> it says, how's your watch hours, Danikin? You know, I don't know. Do you Actually, know? the last I checked, guys, I think I'm at 1,000, believe it or not. I have a lot of videos, but I'm only around 1,000. Yeah. But it, again, anybody that's watched... I, I'm not the guy that's so worried about monetization as I am. I'm going for the thousand for one purpose only, and that is so I can live stream anywhere I want. Now, I don't know if you all have seen the Bob Kaler Walmart videos, but I want to be that guy. Debo, if I see something cool, I want to live stream. And uh, that's that's my main goal with the thousand is I want to be able to live stream wherever I want. I go out to uh, all kinds of Fish stores, fish clubs, and whatever. I'd love to be able to broadcast while in there for you guys. James Lee, how are you, sir? Um, as far as the males not building any bubble nests, I would take it and put it into a, a tank by themselves so there's just the one pair. They might not be making the bubble nests just because there's too many of them in there. Competition. Um, the red-headed Tapajos, the only thing I've heard about them is only keep a pair in there because they get mean and they'll, they'll um, aggravate everything else in the tank if they're trying to breed. Um. Now, Nathan, I did finally, uh, and I haven't put all my videos on there, but I've been working on my playlist, so I do have a like a 16 or 17 video playlist. I have almost a hundred videos. So I just got to go through and start putting them on the playlist. Connor, I don't know about the G of Vegas. Heck lie. I don't, I'm not familiar with that particular um, G of Vegas. So I don't know. I don't have any information on that one. So. Kenny E, James Lee came in. <laughs> yeah, I said, I said hello. You're way behind. You need to get just, caught up. I'm caught up. See there, I'm at the bottom. See, I'm being good. I'm trying to keep up. So new to me, hun. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe we've kept Jeremy's attention this long. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, when I was looking for a night to stream, I couldn't believe Sunday night was open. I thought that would have been snatched a long time ago, but it was open. I'm sure in football, even in football season, I'm, I, most games are over by 9 p.m. You're all Eastern, so might be a tail end of one, but um, I think I'm going to keep this, this slot for as long as I can. I'm, it's going to be the slot that I do. Connor, the thread finicaras, those are so pretty. I especially love the albino ones that Corey McElroy has. I covet those. I want some so bad. I'm hoping that he'll get those to breed and that he'll have some available up in his store. I'll drive up to a store to go get some for sure. <laughs> Kaylor saying people on the Eastern Standard Time turn in early, but not this week. <laughs> not, well, not this one. Now, Bob, I don't agree with that, man. James is uh, when he was first going, man. I, I remember waking up at two a.m. That sucker was still on, so like four a.m. is time. <laughs> so, and then there's a few other East Coasters out there. Those guys are always up, man. And so they're like, please do. Sundays are slow. <laughs> <laughs> now I've already. Uh, secured this slot. I told Brandon from Mr. B's, he's already put it out there. This, this is the time I'll be going every week. Yeah. Our only issue is once a month, it'll Ken would have to leave the aquarium society meeting to get back here in time to do it. But
which means half our mods would be gone. So um, that that I'm gonna have to put a few more people as mods as well because Kim and Ryan and a few of the others will be gone that last week. Monica's not part of it, and uh, Cody's son, but. <laughs> Says Ed and I are mutants from Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's our favorite catfish? You, you're the catfish, dude. Who? Well, my, I would say the Citadonis decorus I have is probably one of the top ones in the house. But my favorite, believe it or not, is the, uh, is the dwarf giraffe cats I have. They're super, super cool fish. Do you see one of them in one of the tanks that no. maybe I could show? No. Then I also have the cockatoo cats. They're uh, Citadatas multi is that, is that right? I'm a butcher with common names, guys. Multipunctatus. Multipunctatus. There you go. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, if you like red-tailed cats, there's a gentleman in this uh, in this uh, chat this evening by the name of uh, Big J. He has some gorgeous red tails. And I'm sure he has some videos. The guy has like I don't know. I think it's at least it's got to be a 12 to 15, maybe 2,000 gallon pond in his yard that he shows. Are there any catfish other than Corey's that you would recommend for a 20 gallon? Well, they the, do have the dwarf uh, Pepsi-Cola cats, the little tiny dwarf ones. Those are cool. Petricolas. Petricola, whatever. <laughs> you all know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd keep one of Big J's fish in a 20 gallon. <laughs> and if you ever go to his channel, you'll see why. You have to go check out these big fish. Upside down cats. That's really a good idea. Yes, that's true. I do have some that's of those true. in our geophagus tank downstairs. We got those from Joey that's in the chat here. Yeah. I'm trying to think other than Corydoras if I have any really. We have some Raphaels in a tank, but they will eat anything that can fit in their mouth. They're not a super big catfish, but they will eat. You need to keep larger fish in the tank with them so that they won't get sure, eaten. Man, that's a pretty close yeah well <laughs> yes yes jeremy it was a close pronunciation <laughs> thank you codison so there is big j's ch channel if you guys haven't taken the time to check him out he has got awesome fish and i'm going to be seeing big j here in about oh what are we down to about three months <laughs> joy brzezinski it's like i'm here there hi <laughs> 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 oh that's a good one south american bumblebee catfish are they uh tiny, brackish though. are they brackish though i thought they might be i don't know are they brackish connor this is there they can go in katrina says bumblebee catfish 20 gallon but you will see it once in a while yeah Meaning it's going to hide. Kaylor oh. says no, they're not brackish. You know, there is some other catfish that I've seen on um, Rachel O'Leary's channel. They're like um, purple oil cats or something. They don't seem to get very big. Um, Any of the wood really cats cute. as well. Uh, got, the wood cats, yeah. yeah. Got cute little wood cats too. Problem with the wood cats, though, and you'll see them one time in your life, and then uh, the rest of the time they'll be hidden. Connor says that the bumblebees are freshwater. Oh, the brackish or the bumblebee gobies. Yeah. Got it. Sorry. Mike's right there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Move I'm over. Sure, I'm sure right now everybody's uh, computer <laughs> screens are cracking from you. I'm sorry. <laughs> A honeycomb cat. She says they've been hidden for a year. Or he says they've been hidden for a year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. God, I can't believe how many club members are in here this evening. That's yeah. awesome. 
So Big J's has five different monster catfish. Wow. Well, I know you have the, the, the is it a tiger shovel nose and the red tail? What other ones do you have, Big J? Bingo catfish. Banjo. Ban Banjo. Oh. White tails cat. See? Fish whisperer knows all these catfish. They don't have a whole lot of catfish in my tanks. We have a good friend at uh, the wet spot, Cameron. He's a big catfish guy, too. Yeah. Maybe one of these nights I'll we'll get lucky and I'll see if he can come on over or, or I'll send him a link and we'll get him on the live stream, too. He's really knowledgeable on catfish. He's the uh, fish manager at the wet spot, so he's very, very, very knowledgeable. It says, what are the first foods you feed your betta fry? Well, I haven't had any betta fry yet, but literally I've got one bubble nesting and I've got him uh, surrounded by two females on either side of his tank. So I'm trying to get them all ready to do some breeding in there. But I plan on feeding freshly hatched baby brine shrimp. I have a fish hatchery or brine shrimp hatchery and I'll do that. Um, otherwise, I would do a powder like some micro powder. So, so this, they think that we should create a virtual club for people that don't have clubs in their area. Yeah, that would be really cool. Um, so Big J says red tail, tiger shovel nose, red tail, tiger shovel nose, hybrid. So it must be a mix. Marble. Macaro tiger. Mobble, a tiger car, and a shovel nose hybrid, and a channel cat. Channel cat, I know it is, Big J. <laughs> we used to catch those in Illinois. We'd go fishing on the weekends. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that would be a fun job, Fish Whisperer. She wanted a lot of tanks. Now she maintains the tanks at work every day. Uh, every day but Thursday. <laughs> now, Nathan and Sand Creek Aquatics, weren't you and Bob or you and somebody were getting together to try to get a club going down that way, weren't you? So I think Nathan's in Mississippi or something, if I remember right. I know Bob and uh, Ed are in Tennessee and James from Fish Room Fever. Big J's in California. Connor's in Virginia, and there aren't many clubs there. Fish, Fish Whisper Miles, where are you from? I'm trying to remember. Is that baby trying to get in the shot? Yes. She's curled up here next to me. Poor little baby. Where she would like to be is on my lap, because that's where she always is, but... There's a computer and mama's in the way, so she can't get over here. Griffin, I knew you were from Kentucky, man. I knew where you were from. So you're from Florida, huh, Miles? Cool. Sand Creek's in Mississippi. Yeah, I knew he was from Mississippi. Now I got to tell you, some of the best fishing that we ever did was in the Mississippi Slough. <laughs> I think we that was uh that was it the he's in Mississippi not right the, but there's a Mississippi River I think runs next to Mississippi if I'm right <laughs> we were in Savannah <laughs> Illinois I know but in the, the Mississippi, Mississippi River. River there you go yeah <laughs> what but it was like ice fishing and I think we caught like 200 fish in an hour oh cool Peplic Creek I didn't know you were from Wisconsin I still have property up in uh, Lake Castle Rock Wisconsin I try to go back at least once a year all my family's from Rockford Illinois I gotta get my lake on once in a while that's why I go up there Mississippi has great fishing <laughs> look at Monica Lynn they're totally married <laughs> 30 years <laughs> 30 years. I don't know how he has put up with me for this long. I really have no clue. Medication. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good answer, huh? That was a really good answer. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. We obviously love each other and uh, got the same interests, so it's been a good good 30 year ride. Yeah, to be totally to be totally honest, he's my hero. He really is. Always has been. 
He's protected me from so much. And he spoils me rotten, I have to say. I mean, he really does. <laughs> that was a fast answer. <laughs> yeah, Fish Whisperer, Ken was the same way. He grew up fishing. And I didn't do a lot of fishing when I was younger. My dad took me out a couple of times. We, we all tried the fishing thing. It wasn't very successful. And then Ken, we after, right after we met, he took me fishing for bluegill. And, oh, my gosh, I had so much fun. And then he took my son Jeremy fishing, and him and Jeremy were catching catfish. And Jeremy, I think he was 18 months old and was holding up stringers full of catfish. It was so much fun to watch. And he, Jeremy always wanted to go fishing with Ken. He just he wanted to be with Ken all the time. I told Jeremy he picked Ken out for sure. <laughs> well, Connor, that sounds like a heck of a birthday. Five bags of fish. Yeah, somebody loves you, Connor. <laughs> no, my mom and dad weren't cool like that when I was 14, man. See, now when I was a kid, I got really, 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 really sick. Very sick with pneumonia. Really bad. And my dad set up a fish tank in my room and he filled it with a bunch of neon Tetris. And I absolutely loved that tank. And then unfortunately, one day I also had a cat and the cat tipped over the bookcase trying to get into the fish tank and broke my fish tank. So I was very sad and I didn't have another one until I met Ken. And then we ended up we started with one fish tank, which quickly became 10. <laughs> and then it came 20, then 30, <laughs> then 40, then 15. And then we moved in here. And I remember one weekend I went uh, to the beach with my friends. And this whole wall was gone. I, I pulled into the garage and this, this wall was there. And his cousin looks out the wall and says, welcome to McDonald's drive Yeah, I suppose Can I, I should take do a panoramic order? view of that for <laughs> Yeah, this whole tank system behind us. Um, his cousin. Built basically, guys, there. this is what we got going on. It's it's basically the whole entire wall, and then I service it from the back, the back of it in the uh, garage. But that's basically two one thirty five side by side, so that's like fourteen feet of tank. Twelve. Feet. Yeah, twelve feet of the tank. That's right. Are you sure? Yeah, they're sixteen. That's what we got going on with those. So, yeah, that's what we were talking about with the tanks. And so we just, uh, Ken came up with the dream. He said, you know, I want to put fish tanks in that wall. And so he did. <laughs> I left and I came to a great home to a great big giant <laughs> hole in the wall and a platform out in the garage with a stand <laughs> to hold all the tanks. And then a few <laughs> days later, he brought in the 135s, and I ended up putting up the wood trim around it. And, yeah, it was uh, quite the weekend. His mom gave him $30, and he only used 27 to get those bags of fish. <laughs> that was some shopping, dude. <laughs> Down the wormhole. Happy birthday, Connor. Yeah, that was a good present. Hey, D, I didn't even see you sneak in. Hi, D. How are you? I enjoyed watching Ken on your live stream the other day. We so enjoy your live stream. Your, your laugh is so completely infectious. Just love it. Yeah, Dee's going to be on my stream here soon, too. <laughs> we had a good time when I was on her, so we're going to have to do that again. Sand Creek says he doesn't have any, um, doesn't have a, tif, a TV, but he has fish tanks and the fish fam. <laughs> That's a good substitute. <laughs> yeah, you're not missing nothing on the news nowadays. <laughs> this is so true. All I watch on my TV is YouTube channels. <laughs> I have YouTube channels going on my TV and on my computer. And I've been just an avid fan since we got really, really rolling back in the hobby again. 
Chevy Fish, no, we, we didn't belong to any clubs when we were back in the Chicago land. I wish we would have known about them back then. <laughs> Jeremy says, next stream idea. Mike's for both of you. <laughs> hey, Jeremy, this mic is on my thing. And I don't know if you've watched. I've got a little thing. It shows the decibels. And when she's talking, half the time it's up <laughs> over the top, man. We just do this so it was easier. We both could be heard. Chevy so. Fish asked Danikin, did you belong to any fish? Clubs I already answered them. Where are, you, oh. are you sitting here or what? Yeah, but I didn't hear you answer that I one. answered that oh already. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. Hey. So, no. Pay no, attention. We <laughs> Maybe I was on another thought process. <laughs> Keep track of me, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Down the road. She's been here for a while. I'll enjoy the stream. <laughs> well, welcome, Dee. Glad to see you. You guys have not been. If somebody could put a link up for D's channel as well, down the wormholes, an awesome channel. She airs every Sunday. Well, it's 9 a.m. my time, so that's Pacific. So I think it's uh, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, if I remember right. Is it? So Jeremy says that they missed half the wall pink story when you took the mic. That's why he was saying it. Oh, I see. <laughs> Well, I could have turned the other mic on, but every time I do, son, the, the people in the chat are saying it echoes. <laughs> yeah, Monica, you're doing great. Putting up the listing, all the YouTubes and the, the things that we're mentioning. Thanks so much. That's just great. Awesome. She really is. Good, good job calling that out now. Natural aquariums, Ryan. Wow. That was quite a haul for thirty dollars. Goodness. No, he said he still got twenty seven left, I thought. No, he, he spent twenty seven of the thirty, I think. That's still a good haul. Yeah. Well look at all the things he got. I'm looking at it, honey. I can see it. <laughs> Remember I got a chat right there. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see that far away. <laughs> yes, Monica is killing it, son. <laughs> Thanks. It's fun, but I need a laptop next time. <laughs> oh, are you still doing it from your phone, Monica? Oh, my goodness. goodness How are gracious. you doing this from your phone that quick? Wow. This is Candy 2.0. They're, <laughs> they're calling Monica Candy 2.0. What that? Now that is a compliment. <laughs> yeah, the super mod Candy. You know, nobody's seen her most of the afternoon, so I'm hoping she's okay. Maybe she's finally getting some sleep for a change. Oh, my goodness. Two phones and quick thumbs. Well, you know what, guys? I just thought about my poor mods. I probably should end this so they can get – Especially for Monica, it's like 1030 in the evening back where she's at. So I think I should probably think about ending this. I sure appreciate everybody coming out. Yes. Thank you for coming to our first live stream. Really appreciated everybody. This was so much fun. You know, uh, Miles, I don't know. My mods would know that. I can't see the thumbs up and thumbs down and all that stuff. We have 51. 51? Are you guys 51 kidding me? likes. 51 likes, my first stream. You guys are awesome. Are you kidding me? And it's been going 88 minutes, and there's 37 people watching. Wow. Thank you guys so wow. much. Thank you so much. Well, as always, guys, I'll end with our signature line. As always, love your fish. Love your fish. This is Kenny E. with Danny <laughs> from Danikin Aquatics. Works. Check it out for now. You guys have a great night. And once again, thanks for stopping out and catch us every Sunday night. Thank Pre you so much. Appreciate everybody. You all have a good night. Good night. And mods, thank you so much for your time. I sure appreciate it. You guys did a great job tonight. Yeah. I'm, I obviously picked the right folk. Yep. Thank you. Have a great night, guys. Bye.